Friends, pray the Lord, and we thank him again for another opportunity. And we thank God for this program, Finding God. And Finding God means um, it's about loving God. And we love him because the Bible says he first loved us. And in John chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have eternal life. And so in the program, Finding God, we are just about responding to God's love. And we respond because he first declared his love for us. And so we go about responding, finding him, finding him. And our basis is we continue thinking about the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ came and he did the mission of finding men, looking for men and women whom he would use to spread the gospel. And therefore, the previous talks, the, the previous sermon, the, the previous message, we talked about the life of the disciples. And I would like to continue with the same. The life of the disciples, the men and the women that Jesus Christ called, and actually to enable people go out. And as they went out, to go and preach. And that is a means of finding God because God goes out to find men. And therefore what we do, friends, is just a response to God's love. And so Jesus called the 12 men, like we had in the previous interaction. And he called them, he prepared them, and he sent them to go and continue with the ministry that he had initiated with them. And therefore, we defined a disciple as someone who learns from the master, as someone who follows instructions. And so Jesus taught these men for the, pre for the three years to be fishers of men, that many more people would find God because he went about looking for them. And so he told them that I will make you fishers of men. And so for these men, there are lessons that we pick from them. And I just want to mention one, two, three, four about these people called disciples and possibly something that you and I can learn we shall continue learning from them. Because previously we did the learning and we shall continue doing the learning. Because learning is a lifetime process. And the Bible and psychology says, learning is from the womb to the tomb. And so we shall never stop learning God's word. And this day, I still come about the disciple. Now, one of the things, one of the lessons that we pick from the, the disciples is that you and I must and should be a disciple. Meaning that a disciple is someone who follows, a disciple is someone who lives by the rules. Now, Christian life is a life that we need to follow what our Lord Jesus Christ tells us. We need to be followers and doing everything that the Lord Jesus Christ tells us to do because he is our master. And therefore, a Christian believer is one who follows instructions. We follow instructions and Christ's instructions are life because his word is life. And so as a disciple, as a follower, as a learner, we need to hunger and thirst for righteousness. You and I require and need it so much because that is a way of finding God and that is God's heart that his people remember we are made in the image of God in Latin it is called imago Dei meaning actually we are God's image and therefore we need to listen we need to follow the instructions in the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 the Bible says lean not on your own understanding can I read it directly that actually Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and the Bible says that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Meaning that actually as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, just like those men were, just like those people were because he called them to listen to him, to hear him. And they followed every instruction whenever they would not. Jesus would rebuke them. Jesus would correct them. And so we as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, number one is that we needed to follow the instructions. 
we need to hunger for thirst we need to thirst for uh, we need to hunger for righteousness and we need to thirst for righteousness so number one is be a disciple be a follower be a, someone who heeds instructions live by what the lord jesus Christ wants us to be and point number two a disciple is someone who has a real life of commitment now this is a point a real life of commitment because this 12 the people that actually were talking about what jesus was here actually taught them very many things but they showed a real life of commitment leaving everything behind they dedicated themselves to the lord jesus christ becoming disciples is commitment so becoming a christian believer is a commitment and so i implore you i encourage you to continue committing your life to continue committing your ways to continue committing your work to continue committing your everything into the hands of the lord because a disciple gives a disciple's life is a real life of commitment and i want to mention to you that commitment is not an option can i repeat commitment is not an option but it's a requirement for a christian and so for you and me as Christians in the, in the land, in the life that God has given us, it's not an option, but it is, a, it is a requirement. It's not an option, it's a requirement. It is our willing response to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I just want to continue encouraging everyone that we need to continue committing our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this man continued, remember that everywhere that he went, they were with him. Was he healing the sick? They were there watching. Was he feeding the hungry? They were there participating. Was he cleaning the temple? He was, they were there. Was he preaching? They were there. A life of commitment. And therefore, I just want to encourage us to continue every day, every moment, every minute, every second. Remember that actually our life is a life of commitment. Some people commit themselves only on a Sunday. Some people commit only them, themselves only on a Saturday. Some people commit themselves only on a Friday. But a Christian believer is a life of commitment all the time because it is a lifestyle. Can I repeat? It's a lifestyle. Really, a Christian life is a, life of, it's a lifestyle of commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the men that we're talking about, the disciples that we're talking about, they left everything and they followed the Lord Jesus Christ. And they had questions that they asked the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter asked a question, now that we have left everything and followed you, what shall we gain? And Jesus tells them that actually you deny yourself, you deny everything. In the end, it is eternal life. And so what we are looking for in this life is life now, to live a life that commits ourselves to God. But also in time to come, there is eternal life that awaits us. Because he says, I can go prepare places for you. I will come, take you, you where, where, where I am, you also be. And so that you and I, will also benefit, will also enjoy the mansions that the Lord Jesus Christ went to prepare. And so we also needed to commit ourselves now that actually our lives, our ways, our work, our everything depicts the real picture of our Lord Jesus Christ, a life of commitment. These people teach us a lot. And so for us here now, that's the point. Now, point number three that I want to talk about, to mention about these people, the disciples, they listened carefully to his teaching. They listened carefully to his instructions. They had to follow the instructions, but listening carefully is the point that I'm making here. Now, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, the Bible says that our Lord Jesus Christ went about, and this is what he went about doing. And Jesus went about in Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness, and all kinds of disease among the people. Now people came from all over the place, from Syria, from everywhere, and he healed them. But the point that they were making here is that actually the people were listening because you can't preach to the people that are not listening. You can't teach to the people that are not listening. And so we are called upon to be listeners, to, to listen carefully to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listening takes an effort. Listening is an act of love. When someone says a word and you listen or someone listens to you it's an act of love actually they have dedicated their time to you so faith the bible says comes by hearing and hearing the word of god that is romans chapter 10 verse 17 that salvation faith 
comes by hearing. And it's so that those that actually listen carefully, that actually are the ones that benefit. So in his final mandate, Jesus tells them, go ye into all the world. Go ye into all the world. In Matthew chapter 28, 19, go ye over all the world and preach the gospel. And now you preach to those that are listening. And I want to thank God that there's someone listening to this. I want to thank God that there's someone who will be listening even after. And we have continued to be listeners of God is of Christ's instructions. He instructed them to go and preach, and therefore we go. And we teach to the listeners, people who will give ear, people who will be hearers. So attentive listening is a good, is a good ministry. And I just want to implore all of us that listening is important. These days, actually, it is all over noise, all over, you know, noise pollution. That's why you hear about noise pollution. People listen less all the time activity, but listening has gone, grown less. And so Jesus here, in his men, the disciples, including the women that followed them, they were followers and they were listeners. So any follower is a listener. Anyone who is a listener is a follower, and anyone who is a follower is a listener. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, we are called upon to do exactly that, that we need to listen and listen well, because this is a requirement. Even the children of Israel, from, the, from Egypt at Mount Sinai, God spoke and they listened. It's all about giving ear. And when you give, when you give ear, you listen and just like we are going to about to mention the next thing is actually to act. Now number four is actually willing they doing what we are told to do, not just merely listening. And so the disciples, these men, when Jesus tells them go, he sends them two by two to go and they went because they listened to the instructions. And so when at Cana in Galilee, John chapter 2, Jesus turns water to wine. And Jesus' mother Mary was there. He tells the people there, as he told them, he tells us, that do whatever he tells you to do. Now, to do whatever he tells you to do requires listening. It's a point of listening. And so in John chapter 2, he tells them, Mary tells them, do whatever he tells you to do. Do whatever he tells you to do. And so I tell you, do what he tells you to do. And not only just on a Sunday, but every day of your week, every month of your year, every year of your life, do whatever he tells you to do. So what he told them, they did because they were, were encouraged to be doers. And James chapter, um, chapter, chapter 1, uh, verse 22, he says, do not be merely listeners, do what the Bible says. And so in this life of the, the disciples, there were men and women who were doers. They were all of the people who were activity based. They kept doing things that the Lord had told them. And because scripture is God breathed, it is useful for rebuke. It's useful for instruction. And instructions are given to those that listen. And so I employ my brothers and sisters, everyone, including myself, that actually we needed to follow instructions and be doers of the word. And these days it's full of talk. People are full of talk. Call them, they call them apostles, name them. They're full of talk. But doing is nil. And so we are encouraged to be real disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be doers of what the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to do. And then I'm just about to wind up with this, that a disciple stays closer to his master. A disciple stays closer to the Lord Jesus Christ up to the end, from the beginning to the end, no deviation, no running away. And so I encourage us that we need to personally spend the time, our entire time, you know, he appointed the 12 to stay with him. Mark chapter 3 verse 14, he appointed them that they might be with him and that he sent them out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we need to stay closer to pick one, two, three things from him. And then we shall be able to be apostles, to be disciples, to be preachers, to be witnesses of what we have known, staying closer. So in your heart, in your mind, in your family, how is your altar? Is it burning or is it just full of ash? Remember, our family altars need to keep burning. So a true disciple, a true disciple stays closer to his teacher, to the master. And so in this simple message, 
about the lifestyle of a disciple. I've not spoken everything, but this is what he says. Number last, number six, is make prayer a top priority. And these people made prayer their top priority. Jesus prayed often. Remember in Luke chapter 9, verse 28, during the time of transfiguration, he went to the mountain. He took the three. And what made him take the three? He went there and he prayed. The Bible says that he went there and prayed. And so Jesus expects us, all of us, to pray at all times. And the Bible in the first Thessalonians chapter 5 says, pray without ceasing. Pray at all times. So my brother, my sister, you're a disciple. Pray without stopping, without ceasing. And in Luke chapter 22, verse 39, he, Jesus came back and found them sleeping. He said, hey, pray that you may not, that you not fall into temptation. So my brother, pray that you not fall into temptation. And so this time around, my brother, my sister, may God bless and watch over you that this life of a disciple will keep you, uh, you know, strong in the faith, will keep you strong following the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I just want to thank God for all of you that keep following this, that you're good, you're really a listener, that you are a follower, that you have a life of commitment, that you are listening, and that you are a doer of God's word and that you will stay closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you will make prayer your top priority in your life. May God bless you and watch over you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we say all these things. Amen.